Hello everyone, welcome back. Here are my solutions uh, for uh, the eight exercises from my uh, Bill uh, Festival, Bill Chess Festival summary video. So let's uh, get right to it. So this this particular position that you can see here, uh, I titled as Bok to play and win. It's from the game Benjamin Bok versus Nico Georgiadis. And uh, Bok was white. This position wasn't actually in the game, but uh, white could have, no, at black uh, defended better. He could have forced uh, with two accurate moves white to reach this position. And uh, it would have been more uh, resistant. And uh, now white has to find a way to. Uh, let's say, uh, convert his advantage. And the first thing that comes to mind is king a3. But uh, I was trying to calculate this in my mind while watching the game and I couldn't make it work because rook takes e3, king b4, rook back to f3, king c5. And in this position, after the move c3, king d6, c2, White is essentially forced to go rook c7 and after g2 White is not in time to win because after king e6 there's simply king g8 and uh, actually it seems like White got himself in some trouble in the process of trying to force the win. So therefore this entire variation with king a3 isn't very efficient with the uh, black's king on f8 and um, he has to come up with something else. So, while me and my friend were uh, trying to calculate in our head what might be the solution, we didn't really know if there was a solution, but we came up with an idea to triangulate and uh, waste the move. So we tried rook g5. However, after king f7, rook g4, black doesn't have to play king f8 and lose after rook g7, as I'll demonstrate later. You can play king e8 and in this particular position there is a problem uh, for white because king a3 is not as effective as it is with the rook on g7 and therefore white has to waste a move and if i keep going to g5 and g4 black will just go to f7 and e8 back and forth and while when i go to g7 he will just go king f8 and uh, transpose to the starting position therefore this is not a solution either so what the solution you probably ask what is it uh, it is actually to triangulate but by a far more uh, creative uh, means and uh, i have to address that uh, benjamin bock after the game was asked about this position i i, I actually asked him uh, blindfold to, to tell me what's the solution and uh, it took him between 20 to 40 seconds to point out the move without any clues from my part. So the right solution is king a2. And uh, the point is uh, quite clear. I want to go king b1 and king b2 and waste the move. If you go king e8, now black will lose after king a3, as I'll mention later. And uh, rook takes c3 is not possible due to e6. So black has to play something uh, like rook e3 waiting and in this particular position we don't go back to b2 but we go to b1 now there is a different point if he goes back to f3 we said king b2 should be winning but there is a difference now in case he plays rook e1 check what's the difference that now instead of king b2 allowing uh, rook uh, e3 back we would go king c2 now this pawn is under attack and black has to play rook e3 and after king d2 he will no longer be able to prevent e6 and defend this pawn at the same time king rook f3 seems like the only move and after king e2 uh, he has uh, no way to 
to continue his resistance. Rook f2 checking a3 and black can resign. Rook the g3 pawn is lost. So, instead of rook e1 check, black has to go back to f3. Taking is out of the question because of e6 and then king b2. And we reached the Zugzwang position once again. This particular mechanism I think can also work with king a1 on the first move. But uh, I think king a2 is the most precise. And now king e8 is the only move to try to keep fighting. But this time around king a3 is working. And it actually transposes to what happened in the game where black didn't uh, pose the, the maximum amount of uh, resistance. Rook takes e3 check, king b4. Rook back to f3. Black has to prevent e6. But now king c5 c3 and we have quite a beautiful difference king d6 c2 and unlike the previous variation where uh, white uh, nearly lost here we played you can play rook c7 threatening rook takes c2 completely winning without any troubles so g2 is the only move and now after e6 black is lost because rook c8 mate cannot be parried and uh, after king d8 e7 check is just winning king e8 rook c8 and white will queen on the next move with check therefore uh, this position is lost after this triangulation i find this uh, solution to be very nice uh, i managed to find it with my friend after a long think and uh, we weren't sure if it's uh, the best way so I consulted uh, the computer when I arrived back to my room after uh, the game is finished and uh, I had dinner with bo both of the players and uh, I was happily surprised to discover that King A2 and this particular mechanism is the only solution to win in this position and uh, I find this uh, position to be very difficult to solve uh, without uh, over the board without having too much time to think. Moving on, this particular uh, position was reached in my classical game against uh, Nikhil Magijnan, a very talented 10 year old from uh, India. And uh, here he played rook h6. And I could repeat moves since I'm a piece down for only one pawn. I could just give a perpetual check by harassing the king with this rook, wherever he goes. But I decided instead to try to get more out of the position. So I played rook f7. He went king e8, because if king g8, rook h g7, followed by king g5, traps the rook and wins on the spot. So he went king e8, rook e7. And now actually king f8 would have been a better defensive task, a defensive move for uh, black. But uh, I would still be able to at least try to play for a win. At least so I'm thinking. After rook h f7, king g8, king g5, forcing rook h8. And I'm, in the game I was considering something like h5 with some winning attempts. In the game he went all the way to the left. Like this, king b8. And now instead of rook b7 check, which I played, a much stronger move would have been king g5. And after capture, which is forced, we reach a very interesting position. White is a piece down, but he has a very dangerous h-pawn. And both the rook and the bishop are uh, far away and difficult. Uh, find it difficult to join the defense against uh, this pawn promoting. And uh, I won't go too deeply into the variations here, but uh, this position is just winning for white. And I find it quite amazing, I couldn't realize it during the game. And uh, I played something a bit uh, simpler, at least to my eyes. Rook b7, rook hc7, and here I played rook g7. My idea is to threaten mate on g8. And if rook h8 I wanted to go h5 and try to push the pawn with h6 and h7, and I thought that the fact that the king blocks this pawn for now will 
will make it harder for the harder for the bishop to come from d3 to save uh, to block this uh, h pawn. And uh, I evaluated this as better for white, which I think he, still think is true, but not uh, winning yet because uh, I think e5 check is one of the different uh, defensive moves that uh, black has. So here. Black would have played rook h8 with a slightly worse position. Instead he chose rook takes h4 check, which I think is a blunder. Because uh, after king e3 I have a, a double attack. Both on the bishop on e2 and I'm threatening mate on g8. So we had to go rook h8 and now after king takes e2 material is equal but uh, white's advantage is overwhelming because of uh, his control on the 7th rank. So I managed to win this position even though the, the starting position even though I was a piece down I find it uh, quite interesting. Let's move on to the next position. So here it's uh, black to move. I was playing against uh, Argyadeep uh, Das from India 2480 if I'm not wrong and uh, more or less and uh, we reached this position in uh, a bit of a time scramble and I managed to find the fourth win. I played bishop g5, essentially forcing rook takes f7. Uh, anywhere else the rook moves I'll play the same uh, idea but uh, rook f7 seems quite forced. Rook, queen takes h2, threatening mate in 1, therefore uh, white had to play g3. Notice that queen h3 uh, would prevent the mate, but after I capture, I would be able to take the rook on f7 and win. So g3, trying to keep everything together. Rook takes b7 is uh, white's next move, but I found uh, an idea that uh, ends the game on the spot. My move was rook de8, with the threat of rook e1 check, and the mate in 3 actually. If it were my move, let's say rook b7 for example, rook e1, takes, 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 and after queen g1, I'm mating my opponent because the e2 and d2 squares are uh, captured by my pawn and bishop. And uh, this threat of rook e1 cannot be parried, and uh, my opponent resigned. The same effect would have uh, this would have uh, the move d2. Yeah, I could have played this move and uh, with the same threat of rook e1 check and uh, if he captures, I take, king takes, let's demonstrate it once again, takes, king takes and after queen g1 check he has to go to e2 and queen d1 mate to follow. Winning all the same, I thought rook d8 was faster but uh, as, as long as I find one of them, I'm quite pleased with, uh, with the situation. So this was a nice way to finish a very interesting game. Next position. This is a position I er that arri arrived uh, against uh, Maxim Rochden, who is the top board in the upcoming Olympiad. And I'll analyze my game against him, this particular game from the beginning in a later video. So there is a funny s story that I can mention after uh, showing my solution to the problem. So first of all, I played rook takes c4. My idea was that after rook takes d6, rook d4, rook d7, a6, knight f6, and all this forced sequence, I play king e2. And I'll go not go too deeply into details, but this ending is uh, a draw as far as I can tell and uh, we, we played it for uh, approximately 8 more moves and uh, agreed to a draw and uh, I'll analyze it uh, in more depth uh, in the actual video and uh, it took me some time to actually convince myself that this is working and I'm, I can say I'm a little bit proud of uh, the fact that I found it but there was a much easier solution and uh, it's quite funny that we both missed it during the game. The solution would have been king to f1 
and it's not a very easy move to find uh, in my opinion his main threat was knight b4 and uh, if i move the rook and take c4 let's demonstrate it if here black has was to move knight b4 rook takes c4 knight d3 check and now after king either to f1 or g1 rook e1 mate and this is quite a big threat so king f1 in the starting position would have prevented the check that comes after knight d3 and now had black played knight b4 in this particular position where he attacks both the knight and threatens mate here i have this nice defense and uh, now white is already pawn up so black can't afford to play like this and uh, the, the reason that this position and the fact that uh, we didn't see it during the game is funny is because two moves earlier it was this position exactly with black to move and he played knight e3 check king f2 knight d1 check king f1 knight e3 check king f2 knight d5 and we both forgot that king f1 would just repeat the moves and the reason that we missed it at least uh, as i can testify is that during the game we both were in quite a heavy time pressure around uh let's say around uh, this position when it arrived on move 38 and black played his move third no it was move 39 black played 39 knight e3 check king f2 then move 40 knight d1 check king f1 yeah this was move 40 for black and I played king f1 quite quickly, as you can tell, probably, as I don't want to get mated after king g1, rook e1. And here, it was move 41 for black, and he got an extra half an hour, and suddenly he stopped to think for almost 20 minutes, and uh, then after the time that, that he used, he played knight e3 check. I took some time as well, played king f2, and when he finally played knight d5 and i thought here for like 15 minutes so much time has passed that it seemed to me like a new position that arose and i couldn't uh, realize that it's exactly the same position we had two moves ago so king f1 was in a, just escaped my thoughts and uh, fortunately i was able to calculate rook takes c4 to a draw Moving on, Le this time we have uh, simpler positions in mind, so um, I wanted to start with another one actually, so let's see if I have the right order. Mm -hmm. So actually one of the positions I have here is wrong, so I'll pause the video for a sec and I'll resume it now so this position i uh, got in the game against anatoly donchenko who i believe is uh, the grandfather of alexander donchenko if i'm not wrong and uh, here i played uh, a move i thought was very strong i even uh, remember uh, showing off to a friend about uh, finding this in the rapid and uh, being proud of it, bishop g5. The idea was that after hg, knight g5, I'm simply threatening knight takes f7, followed by bishop takes f5. And uh, after the move he played in the game, rook f, knight f7, I had this nice move, rook c3. And uh, threatening rook f3. And uh, in the game, after knight f4 that he played, I just uh, had queen h7, king f8, queen h8, followed by knight h7 check, forking the king and queen, and I went on to win this game. Being very proud of myself and uh, the fact that I found this strong combination, only to realize later on that uh, while it's a good move that probably gives an edge, even a, a relatively big edge, it's not finishing the game immediately, and there was a simple win. That I missed. And uh, the win is simply pawn to g4. The idea is that if he goes knight xe3, fe3 will have this double attack on the queen 
and the knight and if he plays knight to h4 or knight to e7 I'll have the same response simply g4 g5 attacking the queen essentially forcing gl hg and uh, after bishop takes g5 I would simply win material as after knight f3 check I can take and queen g6 I believe also knight g5 should be better for uh, white if I'm not wrong so this position is quite uh, quite good for me after g5 and if the queen moves back I'll simply take on h6 and go on to to win this uh, game quite easily so I missed the best move so even when we play well or think we played well there's a lot to learn and uh, it's very easy to miss uh, simple moves sometimes this whole discussion about the moves I missed reminds me of a very good book by Yohanan Afek and Immanuel Neyman if I'm not wrong uh, called Invisible Chess Moves uh, it, it won the 2011 Book of the Year award by Chess Cafe or something and uh, yeah I read the book and uh, while I have to to testify that it's much easier to find moves invisible moves when you know they are there it was a, a very good read and uh, I highly recommend it if uh, for any chess aficionados out there so yeah here in this position my opponent played rook e6 e in the rapid and they thought he would defend the c6 pawn three times against my threat of knight e5 <coughs> excuse me and here uh, what he didn't see is that I have a relatively simple tactic. These last three positions are uh, are easier than the previous ones. Knight e5, queen e8 is the only move, and uh, simply knight takes e6. Rook takes e6 is forced, and after queen takes d5 check, he has to go back with the rook. But I have this rook c8 move for just uh, pinning the queen and uh, winning the game so moving on to the next position here my opponent played short castle and while I have to admit that during the time of the video of the of the recording of the previous video where uh, I posted the questions I thought that after my move castles I'm just losing a pawn it's still an inaccuracy and I'll demonstrate what I didn't uh, know back then and why it doesn't matter and I still should have seen the tactic that uh, was played against me so here it's another uh, position from the rapid uh, tournament and uh, after the move knight takes e5 white has a double attack bishop takes h5 and knight takes e6 and in the game I played bishop takes e2 knight takes e6 and I quickly played b takes e6 Queen takes e2, and my position is very bad. The pawn down, it's almost lost already, uh, by my standards at least. Uh, at least when my opponents are uh, that are playing well, I don't think uh, it's gonna be easy to to defend it. And uh, somehow, by some miracle, I managed to to win at the end. And in this particular uh, position is, is quite bad for a black already but I missed a nice resource here instead of b takes e6 I had this fantastic move queen takes e3 protecting the bishop and um, just uh, taking a pawn in the process and after f takes e3 now I can take and if he takes on d1 for example I can take on e3 check and then take on c6 and I'm even a pawn up at the end so I missed this move but still uh, as far as I can tell white uh, manages to equalize in this position and in the starting position uh, I think that black should be better if I don't play castles so for example um, let's say rook d8 or uh, bishop g6 any logical move that I, that I can play with black should uh, grant me a slight edge as I have a better grip at the center and after the move castles 
In the game I got an almost lost position after knight xc5 and my uh, my actual mistake was b takes c6 but even if I take here castles is uh, the cause that for white uh, uh, ability to equalize here. Let me just check quickly how because I don't remember at the moment. So it doesn't fully equalize actually. It, here he has this move knight d4. So it's not fully equalizing, but as you can see, um, white has some chances to save the game in this variation over here. So, not so easy, but uh, I should have seen it. And uh, another invisible move that I missed. Moving on. This is the last position uh, from uh, my uh, highlights, let's call it. And here it's quite an interesting moment. I was uh, playing with the white side. I just played the move bishop a2 to d5, if I'm not wrong. And uh, suddenly, to my horror, I realized that in this already lost position, he can completely uh, destroy my hopes with king f8. Threatening the inevitable rook h6 mate. As uh, someone mentioned in the comments in to the previous video. And uh, king f8 is uh, just uh, finishing uh, the game instantly. In the game, uh, if I'm not wrong, he played rook h2. After which I took on b7, allowing king f8 once again. And only to have him playing king e6 with a still a much better position. And after bishop a8 and a few more moves uh, in time scramble, somehow, I don't know how, but I managed to reach an endgame where I have a rook and a bishop versus a rook. And I played it for a few dozens of moves and uh, managed to mate my opponent somehow and uh, that's quite an interesting uh, turn of events after this position uh, i would consider myself quite lucky in this tournament so far let's have a quick look yeah we finished our positions for now and uh, what else i can say is that uh, I really enjoyed uh, playing this tournament in Bill. It was uh, all these events, like three different tournaments in one uh, package of 12 days was very nice for me. And uh, I really hope that m more tournaments will do such things in the future. And also we'll, we'll skip the option of having a double round because uh, having nine rounds, one per day, was a very nice uh, experience, experience from professional point of view. There is time to prepare, time to rest after the each game and uh, and gain regain my energies, the energy. So I feel very pleased uh, despite the mediocre result. I would consider it a very good uh, um, training. I would call it a very good. Uh, um, Warm up for the Olympiad that comes in about two weeks, and uh, I hope you learned something from uh, these eight positions and uh, had the chance to to actually solve them. And if not, at least uh, had fun uh, watching the interesting solutions. And uh, if you want to learn some more, then keep watching the next videos.